it's your boy Mr. Potato, back with another banger. We're diving deep into the dark underbelly of the world's most dangerous gangs. The kind of stuff they don't teach you in school. Ruthless criminals, powerful empires, and stories that will make you sleep with the lights on. Shining a light on the darkest corners where these gangs operate. From the drug cartels of Mexico to the prison gangs of the USA, you'll meet the notorious figures who run these organizations. This isn't just about scaring you though. Well, maybe a little. Knowledge is power, right? By understanding how these gangs work, we can better protect ourselves. So buckle up, grab some snacks, and get ready for a wild ride. We're about to expose the truth about the world's most dangerous gangs. We're headed south of the border to Mexico, home to some of the most powerful and ruthless criminal organizations. The Sinaloa cartel sits right at the top of the food chain, controlling a vast network of drugs, weapons and violence. Billions of dollars flow through their hands. But don't let the money fool you. These guys are stone-cold killers. They rule through fear and intimidation, gruesome executions and public displays of violence. They've got their fingers in everything. Cocaine, heroin, methamphetamine. They're like the Walmart of illegal substances. Their reach extends far beyond the drug trade, involved in human trafficking, extortion, and corruption. These guys are basically the villains from Narcos, except they're real. You can't talk about the Sinaloa cartel without mentioning Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. He rose from humble beginnings to become one of the most wanted men on the planet. Known for his ruthlessness and intelligence, he escaped from maximum security prisons twice. Captured in 2016, he's now serving a life sentence in the US. The cartel is now run by his sons, Los Chapitos, who are just as ruthless. From the mountains of Mexico to the prisons of the United States, Barrio Azteca thrives in the shadows. They're not your average jailhouse tough guys. A highly structured, military-style organization with a reputation for violence. Born in the Texas prison system, Barrio Azteca rose to prominence. Fueled by desperation and anger, they started small, offering protection, but soon ran drugs and extorted inmates. They didn't stay confined to the prison yard. Forming ties with the Juarez cartel, they became enforcers and hitmen. Now, a transnational criminal organization involved in drug trafficking, human smuggling, and murder, spreading their influence. Barrio Azteca is known for sheer brutality. They kill to send a message, to instill fear. Their calling card, extreme violence. In 2010, they massacred three people associated with the U.S. consulate in Juarez. This attack highlighted their growing power. Loyalty is fickle within their ranks. The gang is plagued by informants. Constant law enforcement pressure makes life dangerous. Even in prison, their darkness grows and spills out. Alright folks, buckle up, because things are about to get brutal. We're diving deep into the dark world of Los Zetas, a Mexican cartel known for its extreme violence. Imagine a group so ruthless, they make other cartels look like Boy Scouts. These guys didn't start as your typical street thugs. 
Oh no, these were elite Mexican soldiers, highly trained in combat and weaponry. We're talking special forces, the best of the best turned bad. In the 90s, they went rogue, offering their skills to the Gulf Cartel. Talk about a career change. But things escalated quickly. They weren't content with just being muscle. They craved power, control, and a whole lot of cash. They split from the Gulf Cartel, igniting a bloody turf war that made headlines around the world. And trust me, when I say bloody, I mean rivers of blood, folks. We're talking beheadings, torture, massacres, you name it, they've probably done it, and then some. They instilled fear like nobody's business. Think of the most gruesome scene from a horror movie, and they probably lived it. Los Zetas' ruthlessness wasn't just about eliminating their enemies, it was about sending a message. They controlled drug trafficking routes, extorted businesses, and kidnapped for ransom. Imagine living in a town where these guys call the shots. Their brutality knew no bounds. But remember, every empire eventually crumbles. Increased pressure from the Mexican and US governments weakened Los Zetas' grip. The scars they left on Mexico and the world will remain for a long time. From the scorching deserts of Mexico, we are heading north, straight into the heart of the American prison system. And trust me, things are about to get pretty intense. We're talking about the Aryan Brotherhood, a gang so ruthless they make the prison yard look like a playground for sociopaths. This is a highly organized, white supremacist gang born and bred in the most brutal conditions imaginable. Formed in the 1960s, the AB thrived on violence and intimidation. We're talking stabbings, beatings, even orchestrated murders. They have a strict code of conduct, a twisted set of rules that governs their every move. You might think that being locked up would limit their power, right? Wrong. The Aryan Brotherhood's reach extended far beyond the prison walls. We're talking drug trafficking, extortion, even contract killings, all orchestrated from within the belly of the beast. They had connections on the outside, guys who could move drugs, launder money, and silence anyone who dared to cross them. It was like having a criminal empire all run from behind bars. Talk about a captive audience. Their reign of terror came at a cost. The more they expanded, the more attention they attracted. Law enforcement agencies were on their tail, infiltrating their ranks and bringing down their leaders one by one. But don't let that fool you. The Aryan Brotherhood is far from gone. They're like a hydra, cut off one head, and two more grow back. It's a chilling reminder that even within the most secure facilities, hate and violence can fester and spread like a virus. We're leaving the prison yards behind and heading to the streets of Chicago. Meet the Vice Lords, a gang deeply rooted in their community. But don't let that fool you. These guys are far from friendly neighbors. From the 1950s, they grew into one of the largest gangs in the US. Thousands of members bound by loyalty, violence, and control. Turf wars escalated to firearms and drug trafficking. Extortion, robbery, even murder became tools of the trade, a constant threat to the stability of the city.
Now here's where things get interesting. The Vice Lords weren't just about mindless violence. They understood the power of community, of having a hold on the people they claimed to represent. They organised social events, provided for the needy, even mediated disputes. It was a classic case of good cop, bad cop. One minute they're handing out turkeys at Thanksgiving, the next they're shaking down local businesses for protection money. It was a twisted form of community outreach, but it worked. But let's not sugarcoat it, their reign was built on blood and fear. They were ruthless in their pursuit of power, silencing anyone who dared to stand in their way. The streets of Chicago became a battleground, and innocent lives were caught in the crossfire. And despite numerous attempts to crack down on their activities, the vice lords endure. They are a stark reminder of the systemic issues that plague our society. The poverty, the lack of opportunity, the cycle of violence that seems impossible to break. Alright guys, buckle up because we're riding into the world of the Hells Angels. This ain't no biker gang you want to mess with. They've been around since the 40s. Racketeering, drug trafficking. These guys are like the Walmart of organized crime. And don't let the leather vests and Harley Davidsons fool you. Brotherhood is a side of violence and intimidation. You cross one Hells Angel, you cross the entire club, They've got chapters all over the world. Admire the bikes, but steer clear of the riders. One of the things that makes the Hells Angels so powerful is their strict code of silence. These guys are more tight-lipped than a vault full of government secrets. You're more likely to win the lottery while getting struck by lightning than to get a hell's angel to rat on their brothers. And if you think about it, it makes sense. They're all they've got. Family, friends, business partners, it's all rolled into one big bad biker gang. They live by their own rules, answer to no one, and operate in the shadows. They're like the ninjas of the biker world but with a lot more tattoos and a lot less stealth. But hey, it's not all doom and gloom. They do a lot of charity work too. Toy drives, blood drives, you name it. I guess even hardened criminals have a soft spot for something. Just don't forget, behind those acts of kindness are some seriously dangerous dudes who wouldn't hesitate to break a few kneecaps if you cross them. Alright folks, get ready to dive into some history as we're heading to Italy to uncover the Red Brigades. These guys were the stuff of nightmares back in the 70s and 80s. Imagine a group of radical leftist militants armed to the teeth and ready to overthrow the government. That's the Red Brigades in a nutshell. They believed in using violence to achieve their political goals. And when I say violence, I'm not talking about a little shoving match. And these guys were kidnappers, bombers, assassins, the whole nine yards. They even kidnapped and assassinated a former Italian Prime Minister, Aldo Moro. That's like taking out the Italian version of, well, you know who. Their reign of terror lasted for decades, and they left a trail of fear and bloodshed in their wake. They were like the boogeymen of Italian politics. Everyone knew about them, but nobody wanted to say their name out loud for fear of 
what might happen. Now the good news is that the Red Brigades are no longer active. They were pretty much dismantled in the 80s and 90s thanks to a bunch of arrests and internal conflicts. It's like they say all good or in this case bad things must come to an end. But their legacy of violence continues to cast a shadow over Italy. They serve as a chilling reminder that even in a democracy extremism can take root and threaten the very fabric of society. They were like a cautionary tale, a warning about what happens when political dissent turns into violent fanaticism. The Red Brigades might be gone, but they're not forgotten, and their story serves as a reminder that the fight for freedom and justice is never truly over. A delicate balance, you know? Fighting for what you believe in without resorting to the kind of violence that only breeds more pain and suffering. Hold on to your potatoes, folks, because things are about to get real. We're diving deep into the world of the Russian Mafia, also known as the Bakva. These guys are the real deal. Hardened criminals forged in the fires of the Soviet Union's collapse. And trust me, you don't want to get on their bad side. They rose from the ashes of the Soviet Empire seizing control of everything from oil and gas to weapons and human trafficking. They're like the ultimate opportunists, always looking for an angle, always ready to exploit a weakness. They operate with a ruthless efficiency that would make even the most seasoned businessmen jealous. From the streets of Moscow to the glitz and glamour of Miami, these guys have their fingers in everything. They're like a hydra of organized crime. Cut off one head and two more grow back in its place. Now, what makes the Russian Mafia so terrifying is their code of silence, known as Omata. It makes the mob's vow of silence look like child's play. Break it, and you can kiss your kneecaps. Goodbye, if you're lucky. They're all about loyalty, respect, and a whole lot of violence to enforce those values. Think about it. These guys cut their teeth in the brutal world of Soviet prisons. They've seen things, done things, that would make your hair stand on end. And that experience has shaped them into the ruthless criminals they are today. They don't just want your money, they want your fear. They're involved in everything from extortion and money laundering to drug trafficking and cybercrime. They're like the Swiss army knife of organized crime, always ready to adapt and evolve. And that's what makes them so dangerous. So, next time you think about messing with the Russian Mafia, I suggest you reconsider. It's a gamble you're almost guaranteed to lose. Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Mr. Potato back with another chapter. We're diving deep into the heart of Jamaica. We're talking about the Jamaican Posse, a gang so ruthless they make the pirates of the Caribbean look like Captain Jack Sparrow. These guys are the real deal involved in everything from drug trafficking to murder. They control a significant portion of the drug trade flowing into the US and Europe. So, next time you're sipping on a pina colada in Jamaica, remember, there's a dark side to paradise. What's crazy is that the Jamaican posse's roots can be traced back to, get this, the 1970s. Back then, they were hired muscle 
and forces for political parties. Talk about a resume builder, right? Fast forward to today and they've gone global. We're talking international drug trafficking, arms, smuggling, you name it. They've got their tentacles everywhere and they're not afraid to use them. One of their most notorious tactics is the shotter. These are basically hitmen, young guys, often teenagers, recruited and trained to kill on command. It's like something out of a movie, but trust me, it's all too real. So, there you have it. The Jamaican posse, from the sunny beaches of Kingston to the dark underbelly of the world, they're a force to be reckoned with. Stay tuned, guys, because in the next chapter, we're heading to California to meet the Mongols Motorcycle Club. Alright guys, buckle up, because today we're diving into the world of the Mongols Motorcycle Club. Imagine a group of dudes who make the Hells Angels look like a church choir, feared for their ruthlessness. They're involved in everything from drug trafficking to murder. They rock a fearsome patch. A Genghis Khan-like figure riding a chopper. It's a symbol you don't want to see in your rearview mirror. The Mongols are all about brotherhood, ironclad loyalty, and a strict code of silence. Stick around as we uncover the secrets of the Mongols. MC. The Mongols are notorious for their fierce rivalry with the Hells Angels. We're talking about a full-blown biker gang war, complete with shootouts and bombings. Their clashes have left a trail of blood and chaos across the United States. In 2002, a brawl at a casino in Laughlin, Nevada left three bikers dead. The Mongols control vast networks of narcotics distribution. They've also been linked to extortion, money laundering and murder for hire. The Mongols Motorcycle Club is a powerful and dangerous organisation. Alright guys, hold on to your hats because today we are heading to the mean streets of Los Angeles, home to the 8th Street Gang. These guys are the real deal, born and bred in the concrete jungle of LA. They've been terrorizing the city for decades. Their signature? Extreme violence. Drive-by shootings, drug trafficking, extortion, you name it. They rule their territory with an iron fist. Crossing them is like signing your own death warrant. One of the most chilling aspects of the 8th Street Gang is their use of extreme violence. These guys are known for their cold-blooded murders, often carried out in broad daylight. In 2011, they made headlines for the brutal murder of a young woman. The 8th Street Gang also has a reputation for terrorizing their own community. Despite numerous attempts by law enforcement, the 8th Street Gang continues to thrive. Well, there you have it guys. A glimpse into the terrifying world of some of the most dangerous gangs on the planet. From the drug lords of Mexico to the ruthless bikers of America, these organizations operate in the shadows, their influence reaching far beyond their criminal enterprises. Remember, this is just a small taste of the dark underbelly of our world. There are countless other gangs out there, each with their own twisted history and thirst for power. But hey, don't let the darkness get you down. Make sure to smash that like button if you enjoyed this wild ride through the criminal underworld. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell 
so you don't miss out on any of our future adventures into the unknown. For the real crime junkies out there, join our channel membership for exclusive content, behind the scenes footage and early access to all our videos. Until next time, stay safe, stay curious and remember some plants see Sometimes, the truth is stranger than fiction.